Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be testing out new makeup from Natasha Denona, Tarte, Milani, and some new brushes from Sigma. I am super excited about all of this, so I can't wait to share it with you. Just a quick update. I did flip my background back to the way that I had it before. I know so many of you guys love that window setting, but unfortunately, as I've been filming videos, I struggle every single time I film with just trying to get the lighting right. I feel like I'm always overexposed or the window behind me is overexposed and just like this bright blob behind me. I just feel like this is much more even lighting. It's easier for me to control on a day-to-day -day basis because depending on the weather outside, if it's overcast, if it's sunny, everything can look different. And then I have to try to figure out my camera settings and it's just really more of a struggle than it needs to be. So I figured I'll just flip back this way for now until maybe I can learn more about shooting in front of a window. I just don't feel like I'm knowledgeable enough on that subject to really get a good result from it. So I do apologize to everybody who loves looking out the window during my videos. Maybe at some point I will be able to switch back that way. But for now, I figured this was just the better option. So anyway, guys, let's go ahead and just jump in and I'm gonna try on all of these products and let you know my thoughts. All right, guys, so let's start out first with the Tarte Shape Tape Cloud Coverage. So this has SPF 15 sunscreen and it is titanium dioxide only. So it's a mineral sunscreen. There's no chemical sunscreen in here. And this claims on the box to have medium buildable coverage, a natural finish that looks like skin, the cloud nine complex, which is hyaluronic acid, squalane, snow mushroom, avocado oil, prickly pear, aloe, licorice, vitamin E, and castor oil. It claims to have a bouncy cloud-like texture that smooths and blurs your skin. And again, the mineral SPF. So I got mine in the shade 20B light beige. Looking at this in the tube, I think it's gonna be a little too yellow for me. And unfortunately, I do have a pink undertone, which is harder to match. I feel like most foundations have more of a warmer yellow undertone, but I usually end up making them work. So when I first saw this, I was actually a little bit nervous that it was similar or the same product as the one that they have in their Sugar Rush line at Ulta. I really wasn't a fan of that one and it also came in a tube just like this and it had that moussey kind of cloud like feel to it but it had a very powdery dry down and on my drier more mature skin it just didn't look the best it looked very dry and kind of caked up a little so before i bought this i made sure to compare the ingredient lists and they're very very different the sugar rush one mainly has silicone as like the main ingredient and this one has a lot of additional ingredients like the castor oil and the avocado oil and the squalane it has glycerin in. So I feel like this version is definitely going to be a lot more hydrating, which made me very excited for it. So let's go ahead and just try this on. And I think I'm just going to go ahead and apply this with my fingers. I always get comments when I do that from people telling me a beauty blender is better, a brush is better, they blend things better into your skin. And I feel like in some cases they do, but I grew up applying foundation with my fingers. I feel like they just warm up the product really nicely and get it into your skin a little bit more plus I feel like a wet sponge will shear the product out while a brush will sometimes add a little bit heavier coverage I think your fingers just adds the most natural finish and that's what I want to see first and then if I feel like it's not enough coverage I could always try it with a brush next time if I feel like it's too much or too heavy maybe I'll use a sponge but I really don't feel like that's going to be the case with this one So that's done. Let me just show you guys a quick split screen before and after. You can see in the before, I did have a lot of redness around my nose. I think this did even that out pretty well. I don't think it covered it completely. I might have to just touch up with a little concealer on my nose area. But other than that, I would say this is very solid medium coverage. One thing I'm noticing is that it does have a little bit of a glowy finish. I don't know if that's because I'm in bright lighting and if I go like into natural lighting, I don't think it'll look quite as glowy. It doesn't have a dewy or a sticky feel to it. It does feel like it's sunk nicely into my skin. But there are two things that I'm noticing that I don't like so far. The first thing 
is that it seems to be sinking into my pores on my cheek area. And same thing with the fine lines under my eyes. I feel like it's just settling into those right away. So next time I use this, I'm gonna be sure to use a pore minimizing primer. I didn't use any primer today just to see how it wore on its own. So next time I'm definitely gonna try that out and see if that makes a little bit of a difference with that. The second thing that I'm noticing is on my nose. It doesn't seem to wanna stick right to the top part of my nose here. And some foundations just do that. Some are better than others but it's just kind of broken up there so I see little like flakes of it kind of mixed in with the red tone of my skin so it's just not lying very smoothly on my nose area and like I said some foundations they just do that for whatever reason I think it looks good like on my forehead and chin but again I'm just not liking the cheek and nose area so far but that being said I think it had a nice creamy feel it sort of reminded me of the same kind of texture as something like the it cosmetic CC cream it feels a lot like a moisturizer with some color to it so it does not have that same moussey kind of feel that the sugar rush one does which i definitely like but yeah we'll just have to see how this settles in and wears throughout the day next i want to talk about some new brushes that i'm going to be using and this is the sigma Lux collection these are an ultra soft more luxurious version of their other brushes they have really extra long handles which is so nice and sigma has always had very soft brushes but these are on another level they actually actually feel like my refer brushes, but they are still synthetic hair. They just feel like natural hair, which is amazing. So in this collection, you have three eye brushes. You have the E28 Detail Buffer, the E24 Diffuse Blend, and the E61 All-Purpose Buffer, and then three face brushes. You have the F76 Chiseled Cheek, the F44 Powder Sculpt, and then the F28 Powder Bronzer. So I definitely wanna use these eye brushes for my eye look today, but seeing as how the size is a little bit bigger on these, and I have hooded eyes, I usually like to use brushes that are slightly smaller, so I may have to kind of supplement with other ones if I need to. So for my eyes today, we're gonna to be testing out the new Natasha Denona Mini Biba Palette. I love the original Biba Palette. I love that kind of earthy neutral color story. And this one does definitely look like a mini version of it. It has very similar tones. So this palette has three powder matte shades, one metallic, and then one cream to powder, which is absolutely beautiful. And I'm glad that they included that because there are several cream shadows in the Biba Palette as well. Those tend to show up a lot softer than her powder matte shades, and I personally like them because I feel like her powder mattes are very dense and difficult to blend for me. They're super pigmented, so I feel like the cream shades just help you to build it little by little a lot easier. So let's go ahead and start the eye look. All right guys, so that was just a quick, simple and easy look using this shade in my crease. And then I used the cream shade for the outer corner and then the metallic shade right on my lid. I did a little bit of a cut crease because I find that it helps with my hooded eyes just to pop them a little bit and make my lid look a little bit bigger. And I have to say the metallic shade is so beautiful. It picked up really easily. It has a nice creamy texture, not a lot of fallout to it. I thought it was just absolutely beautiful. I felt like the cream shade at the outer corner 
blended nicely. And the Sigma brushes were really nice as well. I used the E24 Diffuse Blend for my crease color and I feel like this blended out that shadow so beautifully. It really did a great job. I didn't feel like I had any harsh edges going on at all. It just, it blended like a dream. And then I used this larger one, the All Purpose Buffer, but really I hardly needed to use this at all. And normally I'm taking a big brush and really like blending the harsh edges away from my crease. And this just really didn't give me any. So these brushes are amazing. The only thing I will say is I needed a smaller brush, which I used the Sigma E25 blending brush just for the outer corner work because these are definitely way too big for that. These are mostly just crease brushes. But overall, I feel like the look came out really nice. So I quickly wanted to show you guys a couple of comparisons with this little palette. I feel like the colors in here are very basic for the most part, and you probably have a lot of these colors throughout your collection. But I wanted to compare it to two Natasha Denona palettes and then one other palette that came out more recently that you might have just purchased. So first I wanna compare it just to the original Biva palette, and I'll show you guys some swatches with some similar colors. Again, I don't think it's exact but definitely has the same vibes going on. I also wanted to compare it to the retro midi from Natasha Denona that came out recently because this one has like a rosy tone vibe but it also has those peachy colors in it too. So I thought that was sort of interesting to just put these next to each other in case you have retro. And then the third palette I wanted to show you is the Smoke and Roses palette from ColourPop because I know a lot of you guys just got that one very recently. And again this has such similar similar shades to that palette. So I definitely wanted to put this side by side with that as well in case you just purchased that one. And then last, I did wanna show it next to the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette because I did hear a lot of people kind of comparing the two and saying that it looked very similar. And while I do think there are some similarities here as far as the shades go, the Glam Palette has two metallic colors while the Mini Biba only has one. So right away, there's that difference there. The Mini Biba also has that cream shade, which the Glam one doesn't so I just wanted to show those side by side as well next up I got a new mascara from Milani and this is their highly rated anti-gravity out of this world mascara so Milani is definitely a brand that I love but I've never once liked one of their mascaras so I bought this one just because I keep hoping that I'm going to like one eventually and it sounded really good it says it's long wear smudge proof and clump proof and that 93% saw extreme volume and instant lift. It also claims to be weightless, lasts for 24 hours, and it has castor oil, plant, and fruit waxes. So let's open this up and check it out. I think the tube is really nice. I like the gold. It's very sleek. And let's take a look at the brush. Okay, so the brush is like an hourglass shape. It's one of the silicone brushes. So like one of the ones that's kind of a little more pokey, but I like that it's not a huge wand. I feel like it'll be a little bit easier to control. So let's go ahead and see what happens. All right, so here's one eye done. I feel like it doesn't give me tons and tons of length necessarily, but it gives a lot of volume. This also dries very fast. So I found that as I was building my coats, it was starting to stiffen up already. And I feel like that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's probably a good thing in terms of like it's smudging because it does dry down really quickly. Um, but at the same time, it limits the amount that I can build because I like to build and build and build my mascaras just to get tons of length and volume and kind of like a false lash look. And I felt like I couldn't really do that with this because it dried so fast. That being said, I felt like the brush gripped my lashes really nicely and I was able to comb through most of the clumps. So that was good, but yeah, not quite sure how I feel about this one yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other eye. All right, next up from Tarte, I haven't heard anybody mention this and I haven't seen it anywhere except the Tarte website. This is their Sea Breezy Cream Blush and Bronzer Palette. So I love their Sea Breezy collection. I have the separate bronzer and I also have two of the blushes as well. And I thought this was so cool to just have them all in one palette. So the shades that are in this palette are Pink Sky, Peach Paradise, and Seychelles for the bronzer. I have the Pink Sky shade, but I don't have Peach Paradise. I actually have one called Peach Sunset. So Peach Paradise is a little bit different. It seems like it's just a little bit deeper than the Peach Sunset one that I have. So I just wanted to show you 
you guys some swatches of these and Honestly, this is such a great formula. If you haven't tried this yet, these cream products dry down to a powdery finish right away. They don't stay sticky. They're super easy to blend. I find them as easy to blend as powders. They're truly a beginner friendly formula. So I love that about them. I also feel like the colors that they come in are just so flattering and they're really easy to build up as well because they don't have a sticky feel. They layer upon themselves really nicely. So I just wanted to show that to you really quickly, but I think I am going to try this Natasha Denona duo that I got and also for bronzer I really want to try on the Gucci bronzer that I got recently for you guys because I never have tried it on on camera and I'm really excited to use this giant Sigma bronzer brush which I really can't do with a cream product so I wanted to use a powder bronzer today and if you missed the video where I talked about this Gucci bronzer I think it was in one of my vlogs during vlogmas this is the perfect color if you have a pink undertone and you want that like like pinky bronze look that you normally would turn in the sun. This is the ultimate most beautiful bronzer color that I have been looking for. Unfortunately, it's $65 or 62, I don't know, it's up there. I mean, the packaging is beautiful. I feel like it's nice and heavy. It really feels like quality. It comes in a little pouch. And like I said, the color itself is perfect. It blends so beautifully on your skin. So this is one of those products because it's been such a hard thing for me to find. Most most bronzers are very warm and a little bit more orange or yellow undertoned. It was definitely worth the splurge for me. So let's go ahead and try this on and I'm going to be using the F28 brush from Sigma's new line. All right, so all bronzed up. Now let's try this new Natasha Denona duo. So this is the Rose Cheek Duo. It launched at the same time as the Mini Beba palette and it says it has a cream blush and a highlighter. So the color actually looked very cool toned on the box, but looking at it in person, it actually is a lot more warm and really coordinates beautifully with the Beba palette. It has more of like a peachy tone to it. So I'm gonna use the BK Beauty 106 brush. This is kind of a denser face brush and I feel like it'll be perfect for cream. Plus it's a little bit smaller, so I think it'll fit in here really nicely. Okay, so one thing about this, you may have noticed that I started applying it with my fingers and then just blending it with the brush. That's because the brush didn't really pick this up in the pan at all. It's a lot stiffer of a cream, very similar to the one that's in the new Glam Face Palette, if you've seen that one. It kind of feels like it's drying out, but once you actually swirl your finger around in it, you can tell like it is creamy, but it has a very powdery feel to it. So it's just very hard to pick up with a brush at all, even a dense one. But once you do get it on your cheeks, it blends so seamlessly with this brush. It really was very easy and effortless to use. I just recommend swirling your finger, putting it on, and then blend it. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of the highlighter that comes in here. And I don't know if this is going to work out, but I want to try the Sigma Powder Sculpt brush. It's like a flat brush like this. So I feel like it might be good for highlighting. I'm just going to put a little bit on the tip of it right here. See how that works out. This brush is so soft. This is a beautiful highlight. It's pretty intense. It has more of a metallic sheen to it, but at the same time, it is very smooth. It doesn't look overly glittery. It's just really, really shiny. So I like this duo a lot and I really, really love the blush color as well. So I think this is gorgeous. All right, so then for lips, I have some of these new Milani Color Fetish lipsticks. I know these went completely viral on TikTok and they were sold out for the longest time. I finally got my hands on them because Milani Milani restocked them on their website. So I got three different shades, mostly more on the neutral side. I got Tease, Secret, and Pleasure. And these claim to be an ultra creamy, pigment rich lipstick in a range of shades designed to complement every skin tone with a luxurious, soft, velvet matte finish. This high comfort lipstick glides seamlessly onto lips for full coverage, one stroke payoff. The long wearing formula keeps lips smooth and soft with moisturizing hyaluronic acid. So I really enjoyed their color fetish balms that came in the same type of packaging. Those have a really beautiful formula if you're more into tinted lip balms. They have a lot of 
color payoff, but the feel of a balm and they give you a little bit of shine. So those are really nice. So I thought I'd just try on all three colors for you guys really quick and you can see what they look like. So first up, let's go with teas. Next up is Secret. And then the last one is Pleasure. All right, so these are definitely full coverage in one swipe. I feel like they did drag on my lips just a little bit. My lips are very dry today, but I also applied lip balm before I started this video. And I feel like in person, they do look kind of dry with these on. So I don't know, it's possible. They might be better for me in the summertime when the air isn't so dry. They don't necessarily feel dry. They have a very cushiony kind of feel to them. They feel hydrating enough. It's just the look of them. I feel like they're accentuating my lip lines a bit. So I don't know how I feel about that, but I think I'm just gonna let it sit for a while and see how it goes. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and fix my hair and I'll be back with final thoughts. All right guys, so here are my thoughts on everything so far. The Tarte Shape Tape Cloud coverage, I'm not really sure about it yet. It's really breaking up badly on my nose area and I feel like it's letting some of my redness back through again, which gives me serious doubts about how it's going to last throughout the longer part of the day. I will definitely let you guys know either in a pinned comment down below or in the description box how it actually ended up wearing. But so far, I just don't like the way it's sitting on my skin, especially on my cheek area. I just think it looks kind of heavy and makeup-y and I didn't really put that much of it on. It's just really sinking right into my pores. So I'm not super crazy about this yet. Another thing I'm not super over the moon about is the Milani mascara. I still haven't found one that I really, really love. Now granted, mascaras can sometimes get better as they go. So I will continue to try this and see if maybe I start to like it better over time, but it was just weird how quickly it dried down and it really prevented me from building it up as much as I wanted to. So not crazy about this one yet. Also, these Milani lipsticks, I couldn't have been more excited after all the hype on these, and I just feel like they look a little bit dry on me right now. I don't know if it's coming across on camera or not, but in person, my lips just look super lined. It's like they just highlight every single crack and crevice of my lips. So if you have very smooth lips, I don't think it would be a problem, especially because they don't feel dry. They have a really nice creamy feel and I'm enjoying actually wearing it. That's not really the issue. It's just the way that they look on me. But I've kind of struggled with lip lines my whole life. I'm 44 now, but even when I was young, I still had a lot of lines in my lips. It's just kind of hereditary or something. So not really crazy about those either. However, I am really loving these Sigma brushes. This bronzer brush was beautiful. Again, it reminds me of my Refer bronzer brush and that one is around $150 price point, I believe. This one is so much cheaper and it feels just as soft. It's just as big and fluffy. So I'm really happy with this. If you've been looking for an alternative to that Refer brush, check this one out, it's awesome. As far as the eye brushes go, if you have smaller eyes or hooded eyes, I feel like these might be a little too large for you, but I have to say this one, which is the Diffused Blend, this worked perfectly for my crease and it blended out so seamlessly. I was really impressed with it. So if you get one, I would say this is definitely the one to get. This Powder Sculpt brush was also beautiful for putting on my highlight. It's so soft and I feel like it would be great to use for contour also. It's a really nice shape and I think these bristles just diffuse the powder beautifully. The Mini Biba Palette, I really like this. I know it's very basic and we probably have a lot of colors like this in our collection already, but I was just impressed with the formula. I loved the metallic shade in the middle. I thought it just applied beautifully. I love that they included the cream shade as well if you want more of a diffused look. And if you just really like these peachy colors and you want them in a smaller format, this is definitely a good one. I also really like the Rose Cheek Duo. Once I got the blush going, I feel like it's a beautiful color and the highlight is gorgeous as well. 
And the Tarte Breezy Compact with the bronzer and the two blushes in it, I think is awesome too. If you are a fan of this formula like I am, I think it's so cool just to have them all in one palette. And I don't even have to try this to know that I really love this formula already. So I think this is so cool as well. So definitely some hits, some misses, but like I said, I will update you down below with all the information on how everything wore throughout the day. And I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. If you've tried any of these products, I'd love to hear what you thought of them. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me as always and spending time watching this video. I appreciate it so much. And if you are new here and you haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you go. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button as well. Thank you guys so much. And I will see you all in my next video. Take care guys. Bye.